the beauty of income property is you could own a property that is appreciating in value. You're making money. You've got positive cash flow. The investment is going wonderfully well, yet in the eyes of the IRS, you're losing money through depreciation. And so it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful type of write-off. But the problem is it takes 27.5 years to realize that write-off. With cost segregation, you can take components of the house and depreciate them faster. Hey everybody, so for years we have had a lot of people talking to us about cost segregation and we have done shows on it before and it has been difficult to access this for smaller investors who own single family homes. As I told you before in prior episodes, on one of my big apartment complexes, I did a cost segregation study, saved us a ton of money, cost over $20,000 to do that study, but it was worth it because we saved more. And the key is finding an economical cost segregation solution for investors who own single family homes to make the economics of that work so that the cost seg or cost segregation study is inexpensive enough to get enough savings, right? So to make that equation work. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm super excited to share this with you. And we've got a special coupon code of promotion, which is the name of yours truly. Okay, Jason. Uh, yeah, so you can go to their site and get, I believe, $50 off your studies by using the promo code Jason. Uh, so I want to introduce Randy and AJ with DIY Cost Segregation. And let's dive into it, folks. So explain what is cost segregation? I was talking about it, but maybe some people don't know. Randy, go ahead and take a lead on this one. Okay, basically cost segregation is a way to accelerate your depreciation on your residential rental properties and decrease your tax burden. It doesn't give you more depreciation, it just front loads that depreciation. It's kind of like if you win the lottery, do you want all your money up front or do you want it in equal payments? This gets right. you more up front, which saves you money on your taxes. Good stuff, good stuff. So as you've heard me explain over the years, especially when we talk about the Hartman Risk Evaluator, when you buy a property, you're not buying one thing. You're really buying two main components, the land and the improvement or the house sitting on that land. And the IRS making income property the most tax favored asset class in America has allowed people to depreciate the house over a 27.5 year schedule. And the beauty of this tax deduction is it's a non-cash write-off or a phantom write-off. Usually if you want a tax deduction, you've got to spend some money. If you have your own business, you got to pay for some advertising, some new equipment, hire an employee, pay a salary, whatever to take a deduction. Or if you don't own a business and you just donate some money to charity, maybe that charitable deduction is tax deductible. But either way, you're spending money. Here, the beauty of income property is you could own a property that is appreciating in value. You're making money. You've got positive cash flow. The investment is going wonderfully well, yet in the eyes of the IRS, you're losing money through depreciation. And so it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful type of write-off. But the problem is it takes 27.5 years to realize that write-off. With cost segregation, you can take components of the house and depreciate them faster because the structure itself might be on that 27.5 year schedule, but the air conditioning isn't. It's on a shorter schedule. The dishwasher is on a shorter schedule and a whole bunch of other components, which our guests will tell you about. So AJ, what are some of these components and what are the shorter depreciation schedules for them? Um, one great example we always give is carpet versus ceramic tile. Um, we all know that ceramic tile um, is you know, just as good as flooring, but IRS says that has to be classified as 39 year long life, um, whereas carpet is going to give you that five year short life benefit. So the IRS guidelines say that we're able to take carpet and move that from your long life, which is in this case is 27 and a half years, and we're able to move it from that portion over to the five year portion. So that's where it gets accelerated. We're picking that small portion of your property um, out of out of the pie and we're moving it over to your to your short life depreciation. So that's one example. Okay, good. Randy, are there any others you want to mention? Oh, there's a lot of them. I think you mentioned appliances. Um, we do allow appliances to be placed into our software. 
and your appliances are all five-year. There's portions of electrical and plumbing systems that can also be considered five-year when they service items that are five-year. So everybody now has a computer. They plug their computer into an outlet. That portion of the electrical system can actually be considered computer equipment electrical, and it's a five-year line item instead of staying in the 27 and a half year straight line. Okay. Fantastic. So let's look at a report real quick. One of your actual, this is a sample report, but it's just how it'll look, except it'll have your property address on it. So let's take a look at this and look at some of these real items. And by the way, if you're listening on audio only, let's make sure we verbalize everything we're looking at. If you're watching on, on video, of course you can see this, but here's a pie chart for a property. Now, this is a really inexpensive property. And, you know, the market has <laughs> increased in value quite a bit. But the important thing to note, as Randy mentioned before we started today, is that the cost segregation study is not based on the market value of the house or the apartment, or it could be for commercial property or whatever. But, you know, most people listening are single family home investors. And so it's based on the price you paid for it when you acquired it. That's what it's based on. So in this example, this is a property purchased for $90,000. The land value is $15,000 and the improvement value is $75,000, totaling $90,000. Now, that improvement value usually would be on that 27.5 year schedule, but some of that stuff we can accelerate, we can move it up if we do the cost segregation. So just to whoever wants to take it, just explain a little bit of this report and this pie chart to us. Yeah, definitely. So uh, once you purchase a report from us, you are able to save it as a uh, Adobe PDF right away to your computer. So you're providing an instant report. Once you get that, the first page is almost a summary. Uh, we're going to have your property uh, address, entity name, anything like that, and then the cost basis of the project, which Jason just discussed. Um, just below that, we provide a pie chart that shows a breakdown of your results. So what we have in 27 and a half year currently, and what we were able to move into five and 15 year. And just below that, there's just a text breakdown of that. So we show um, your 15 year site improvements and the uh, monetary value that we were able to move over. So in this case, that's 79, 79.85. Okay, and um, let's just round off. So $8,000. Yeah. So about okay. $8,000 there. And then the same thing right below that, we go into your five year. Um, so that would be interior improvements. And we have just about 13, just over $13,000 into five year for that. Um, below that is the portion of the building that the IRS says has to remain in the structural component or the long life. Um, so this is what is left there. And in this case, it's uh, just under $54,000 for a 27.5 year schedule. Correct. Now, normally, yep. All of this would be on that 27.5 year schedule. Correct. But what, what you've done with this getting the cost segregation is you've moved up about $21,000 of that improvement value to take an instant deduction, right? Yes, you've moved that up. So you have the, the instant deduction there, especially if you qualify for the 100% bonus but you still will have a bit of value in that 27 and a half year because that still is depreciation, depreciating over the straight line. So you would take that number and divide it by 27.5 in this case. And that would also give you a, a couple more thousand dollars in depreciation for your first year. Right, right. Okay, got it. You know, this could be a property you bought five years ago. It doesn't matter when you bought it really, right? Uh, correct. When you get into... Um, purchases made um, five, 10 years ago, obviously um, the, the five years has passed um, for your five year. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah good point. Um, so but there, there, there would still be some 15 year in there and Randy may have a little bit more insight on, on that as well. Yeah, you're gonna, what that would be is it's actually called a section 481A adjustment. That's IRS lingo. Section 481A, form, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> they use Form 3115 to apply that. That's something that your accountant would do. But they actually, it's called look back. So anything that would have already been taken, had you done cost segregation from the beginning, can be taking, taken that year that you do. It's always best to do cost segregation from the beginning, but it certainly makes it sense to also go back to previous years. There is a point where that where it doesn't make sense anymore. But I would say anywhere from five to seven years back will almost always make sense uh, to go back and do that. 
Right. Especially when you hear how inexpensive the reports are. So you're going to see that definitely this is a, a good thing to do. So really, for people listening, if you purchase this property recently or up to maybe four years ago, that's sort of the real sweet spot, right? If you're in the first four years or so of ownership, I think that's when you can really maximize deductions, right? After that, it starts to peter yeah, out. Yes. Bit. And matter of fact, when we're talking about the 100% bonus for people that can actually uh, utilize that, that allows you to take the five year and the 15 year all in the very first year. That kicked in in very late 2017. I believe it was September 27th, 2017. It was part of the CARES Act. So anything purchased after that, that's really a great place to look. If you purchased it October 1, 2017, or after that, it really makes sense to do the cost seg. It makes sense without it, but the bonus is just like the cherry on top. Okay. All right. Fantastic. So let's dissect this a little bit, un unpack the, the details. Okay. So in these three sections, remember we had initially just one section improvement versus land. Land is not depreciable. So we're just appreciating the improvement, which in this case was $75,000. But now we've broken that up into three components and the 15 year depreciation schedule includes in this example clear and grade for site work landscaping drives walks curbs gutters fencing uh, parking bumpers uh, stripping and site lighting now remember most cost seg has always been relegated to big commercial properties so you see why we're saying that right you know because people are thinking in their house they don't have a lot of that stuff <laughs> okay right. and, uh, and up there is just generally if you go down to that second page we go into a breakdown of if each component that we decided to move into your 15 year into the five year especially so that is a little bit more general verbiage up at the top and you're going to be provided a bit more breakdown at the bottom mm -hmm. so that's the first one okay so let's look at section number two we've divided this improvement which was one thing before into three components rather than just one singular component. Now we look at equipments, furnishings, and this is the five year, 200%. What does DB mean? Uh, declining Depreci balance. Oh, declining balance. Okay. And that was on the other one too. Okay. So here it says computer equipment, electrical and wiring equipment, electrical outlets, demountable walls. What are those? <laughs> okay. Maybe movable walls or something? T typically, um, it depends on how they're constructed. And again, this is a generic description. Yeah. When we get down to the down to the next page, you're going to see exact amounts for different items that are typically yeah. seen. I, I think of air walls and hotel ball ballrooms, by the way, when I... I there you go. That, that's we, actually a great example. Yes. Yeah. We host conferences, so, you know, okay, there's that yeah. air wall that divides the ballroom, right? That's exactly what that is. Okay, so removable floor coverings, equipment, plumbing, cabinetry, removable wall coverings, decorative lighting, task lighting, removable window coverings, and window tint. Oh, that's interesting. Window tint. Okay. So that deduction is just over $13,000 in this example. Anything you guys want to say about that? Um, um, I think that's self-explanatory. You'll see the yeah. detail below. Okay. All right. Now we get to the last section, which really remains the same, although it's a lower amount on the long schedule. And we've got an instant or shorter amount for the items we mentioned. Okay, so now 27.5 years, this is all as it was before you did a cost seg study. And, you know, that's everything left over, basically, right? Okay, yeah, those are the, the structural components that are that are left that we weren't able to break out into those other categories for you. Okay, great. Now, I'm surprised to see HVAC in there. And I know that permanent floor coverings, if it's carpet, because you just said that is on the five year schedule. So why is that in there? Uh, well, that's just I was say this is one of those weird IRS things, and that's why we always stay up to date on the, the new guidelines and, and case law. We all know that a, a HVAC will not last 27 and a half or 39 years, which is where the IRS says that we have to keep it. Um, and unfortunately, that's just one of those guidelines. Randy, do you have anything to add to that? I just say that is a that we use a thing called the master <laughs> depreciation guide. It's the it's the Bible of depreciation, and it's about three inches thick, and it has everything possible in there and almost always 
HVAC is considered long life. As AJ said, we all know that it won't last that long. It's the yeah. same with roofs as well. You'll see roofs on the next page. Okay. And that's the exact same thing. Okay. And I'm sure that depreciation book you're talking about is an excellent cure for insomnia. So <laughs> trouble sleeping. Yes, it is. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Randy, you wanted to mention something here, I think about retiring assets or something. Yeah. Could we look at the second page of the report? Yeah. Yep. And what happens is even though items, so on the left-hand side, we're looking at the second page of the report and you'll see you have a, you, there's our site improvements at the top. But then you have items that are all considered part of the building going down the left-hand side. So we have roof coverings for 31756 That's about the fifth one down on the left-hand side there. That would be like your shingles or your, oh, here it your is. tile roof. But again, we all know that in a hot climate, um, I'm from Florida, and in Florida, there's no way a shingle roof is ever going to last 27 and a half years. The IRS requires it to be there. So let's say you purchased your rental home and five years later, you have to replace the roof. Well, there's still a good bit of value in that 3017. Now this is a small house. So imagine a house that's a $500,000 house and it's going to be about five times this amount. It's going to be about 15 grand that was assigned to the roof. Right. Well, on the 27 and a half year, you only got about 15% of that depreciated. So the remaining value when the roof is replaced can be retired in one year. So if there was 10,000 left of life on your depreciation schedule for that roof, then your accountant can take that in one year and retire that asset instead of leaving it on the books for the remaining, you know, for the remaining life of the 27 and a half year. Okay. And yeah, that's, I'm, you know, I'm glad you mentioned the price. We're, we're looking at a really inexpensive property here almost nobody in the last four or five years is buying $90,000 properties. Okay. So now these are in you know, country Ohio or, yeah. you know, something like that out in the right. suburbs or the very country area of Ohio, you might see this, but yeah. it's very rare to be this low. Okay. So, so in other words, if you bought a $400,000 property, you know, just triple the numbers roughly okay, Correct. or quadruple exactly. them, I should say. But remember, your land value is higher there too. So it's not an exact match, but about maybe three and a half times the numbers we're talking about. So keep that in mind. If that number here is $21,000, you're looking at maybe $75,000 in tax deduction you wouldn't have had had you not done a cost segregation study. So it's pretty exciting. Okay, what else do you want to show us here? And, you know, let's if, uh, start to wrap up. If you look up. to the right, kind of where you're at, just up a little bit, it shows the percentages of the taxable basis. That's the purchase less the land value that ended up in what we call the short life, the 17.63 and the 10.64. That's mm -hmm. very average for a rental home. So nice. you would obviously apply those to your basis, which again, we're talking maybe three or 400 grand instead of in this case, 75,000. So the percentages typically stay very much the same. One of the big things that will make a change to it is if you happen to have a rental home that has a swimming pool, the swimming pool value goes into the 15 year and typically uh, a swimming pool is going to be obviously a considerable amount of money that's going to end up in there. One thing to remember, people will say, oh, well, my in this scenario, my kitchen countertops over to the left, it's $1,938. They're worth way more than that. Well, what a cost segregation does, it has to look at your purchase less the land. And then it's got to assign a fair value to everything, not just to the items that get to be accelerated. So our software does that. And then we call it, it spreads. And it's either going to spread up or down to match your basis. This exact home in Los Angeles would be 900000 So all of this would multiply out by about times 10 if it were a home in Los Angeles. Actually, actually, I, I don't know if I'd agree with that because if it were a home in Los Angeles, the percentage of land value to improvement value, what I call the LTI ratio, the land to improvement ratio, I actually coined that term years ago, would be much higher in LA where, or, you know, whereas here you have low land value. So you, you are correct. But yeah. what we have found in our experience, and we typically have people look at their tax assessor's website, if they can't determine a land value, 
and use the same percentage that the tax assessor has on their website. Yeah, then there's not going to be a big on their risk. Purchase. Yeah. But right. we've also found that 20% land value seems to be a pretty de defendable position if you're ever sitting in front of the IRS trying to explain how you came up with a land value. So we don't typically see any up anything up into like the 50% range or anything like that. And again, we've been doing this for 20 years and uh, I've done an awful lot of studies. Yeah. Okay. Wrap this up for us, if you would. Let's talk about the cost of the study. It depends on the price of the property, right? Right. As soon as you input your purchase price and your land value on our website, you can scroll down to the very bottom and your cost of a study will have automatically updated for you. For residential studies, it is between $445 and $995. And again, that's just where you fall um, with your cost basis. Okay. And so I did a sample before we started here today, and I put a $400,000 single family home in there. And the price was $690 for the study using the promo code Jason, J-A-S-O-N. It went down to six hundred and forty dollars and then you have an option to buy audit protection audit defense in case someone gets audited they can spend another 195 dollars and, and get that as well or they can just not get it and just do the report either way right yeah, actually the, jason that 640 included the audit defense had you oh, not included the audit defense right. i believe it would have been 445. Okay. And some people choose not to but the vast majority of people you know, want the audit defense, but that's completely a decision that the consumer is going to make. Okay, good stuff. Well, guys, I appreciate this. This is a topic of great interest to our audience. So we really appreciate you talking about it with us today. And yeah, uh, for anybody listening, feel free to reach out to our investment counselors. Our team will be glad to help you. And by the way, they have some sample reports they can provide to you and some more detailed information that both AJ and Randy supplied to us and some great stuff, which I'm going to provide to our entire team that they can provide to you. So feel free to talk to your investment counselor and, and they can give you some additional information. You know, do I qualify for all these tax benefits? Just a whole bunch of detail. They can email you a PDF on that. Okay. So good stuff. Any final words there, guys? Thanks for having us, Jason. And we look forward to helping people out. Yeah. And have a great day. All right. Thanks for coming on. Right. Bye. Bye.